Thank you.
that the courtroom over which he presided be henceforth named the John M. Dillon Hall of Justice.
tried to fix it, but it wasn't an image of success. <laughs> Speaking of hair, the Tillens all have hair, the brains all have hair. Bob, you kept your hair? Quite an accomplishment. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm just sorry that your father isn't here and your husband. Thank you, John. And the hair. I'm just glad you're dead. Yeah, I didn't know your your husband that well, but of course, when I visited the court, you know, it was always nice to see him outside the court, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, I never saw him, you know, in court. Although there was there were several opportunities <laughs> that could have presented itself. I was thinking the one on the way here, where um, <laughs> one time I was racing down uh, the service drive to Jeffries. This is before the Jeffries Expressway was even open. And I was going 70 in a 25. Oh, and uh, there's a record police officer off to the side. And he was out there playing his air. I just totally missed him. And uh, so I just hit the brakes and I pulled over, got my license and the registration out already. And he came right up to the window and a heartbeat. He pulled out just as fast as I was going to catch me. And uh, I was just sitting right there, and he came to the window. He goes, give me your license and registration, and I handed it to him. And um, so he went back to the car, and he came back in a few minutes. He says, are you the judge's son? And I said, yes. And he said, I suggest you slow your ass down. You were going 50 over when I caught you on radar, or going 70 when I caught you on radar. And um, so a couple months passed by, and uh, I remember I was sitting at home, and my dad came home for lunch. And he goes, what's this here about you going 50 over? And uh, I, I, I didn't know, the, I wasn't prepared for a response because I thought the cop would never wrap me out, you know. <laughs> so the best thing I'd come up with, I said, it was 45. <laughs> and, uh, my dad, he was funny because he didn't say anything after that. I think he was just shocked at the other stupidity of the response. That he was probably more concerned about that than the fact that I was going so fast. And again, I'm sorry you're having uh, So let's go. Um, proclamation honoring Ron F. Brain Jr. Whereas Robert F. Brain will be retiring on November 20th. Oh, 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 wrong one. <laughs> we got to know the junior. He's still on the payroll? Whereas Robert Francis Brain was born on October 27, 1920, in Wallace, Idaho. Can you hear me okay in the back? Okay. Uh, he was the third child of Alfred and Mary Condon Brain. His first home was on a mountainside in Burke, Idaho, where his father was chief engineer for the silver mines. Whereas at age seven, he was stricken with infantile paralysis, which left him unable to move any of his limbs. His father gave up his job and brought his family to Michigan where a hospital in Farmington was experiencing some success in treating polio. After several operations and lengthy hospital stays, Bob regained the use of his arms and right leg. For the rest of his life, he wore a brace on his left leg, used a cane, and never called attention to his disability, nor allowed it to unduly hinder him. Once while recuperating from an operation, he confided to his mother that he aspired to become either a doctor or a lawyer. He told her that he thought his hand shook too much to pursue medicine, so he chose law. Whereas his family settled in Detroit, and Bob grew up with his brother Alfred and his sisters Mary Gertrude, Patricia, and Joan. In 1940, he graduated from St. Gregory High School, where he was class president, valedictorian, and student manager of the baseball team. Then he attended the University of Detroit, where he majored in history and philosophy, and was president of the student union. He excelled in the debate society and won the highly regarded Skinner Debate Medal and was included in America's Who's Who. Bob was in Phi Beta Kappa, Delta Sigma Phi, Delta Phi Kappa, and Gamma Rho. Whereas he met Helen Marie Foley, a varsity news reporter, on the steps of the Commerce and Finance Building in 1943, and they began dating. Bob received his Bachelor of Arts degree in 1944 and two years later graduated from the UD Law School with his Juris Doctorate degree. Whereas on October 4, 1947, Bob and Helen married at St. Scholastica Catholic Church in Detroit, 
They spent their early married years in Detroit, where they started their family and Bob established his law practice. That same year was also the first of his 25 years of teaching business law at UAD's evening division. He was the first recipient of the Instructor of the Year trophy, awarded by the students, and was bestowed this honor many times over. Whereas in June 1956, the Brang family moved to their new home in Rupert Township. <clears throat> the family became active parishioners of St. Robert Bellum, Bellarmine Catholic Church, and Bob performed much legal work for the parish. He was active in the Knights of Columbus and the Men's Club. He was also a strong supporter of the St. Vincent de Paul Society, the Father Van's Boys Organization, the Boy Scouts, and Indian Missions. Whereas, Bob's, whereas Bob commenced his political career by becoming a precinct delegate in 1958 and joining the local Democrat Party. Soon he was elected chairman of both the Rupert Township Democratic Party and the Democrat Boosters Club. In 1966, Dad, he's got you belong. <laughs> Bob was elected trustee of the Rupert Township Board of Trustees. The state legislature created the district court system in 1968, and Bob won the two judicial positions of the 17 district court. Whereas he presided as Rupert Township District Court Judge until his retirement on April 25, 1990. During his tenure, he established the Rupert Information and Counseling Center on drugs, which addressed serious social issues. Whereas Bob was a voracious reader and specialized in the Civil War. Over the years, he championed school sports and actively encouraged the youth of Rutgers. He rooted for all of Detroit sports teams and for the University of Detroit <coughs> Notre Dame football team. Not only because of his Irish and, and his ancestry, but because of the fabled four horsemen visit him as a boy in the hospital. Whereas Bob and Helen had eight children, Kathleen, Robert, Mary Therese, William, Barry, Stephen, Daniel, and Patrick, Bob was a loving father who led by good example. He enjoyed being with his family, took with them on wonderful vacations, and supported his children's endeavors. He was thrilled by the birth of each of his 12 grandchildren. Deanna, Laura, Robert, Patrick, Amy, Beth, Adam, Kelly, Sarah, Caitlin, Dakota, and Austin. He was delighted when he became a great grandfather to Dylan, Bailey, and Colin. He cherished his extended family and good friends and had many happy times with them. Whereas after several years of declining health, Bob peacefully passed away on the night of April 29, 2008. He will be missed by all who knew and loved him. Now therefore be it proclaimed that the Charter Township of Redford Board of Trustees recognizes Robert F. Frank for his outstanding contributions. the 17th District Court. And the Rufford community. <clears throat> and be it further proclaimed that the courtroom over which he presided will be henceforth named the Robert F. Frank Hall Chest. Kathleen, if you'd like to say a few words. Your, your older brother has uh, said you were the spokesperson. But I'll let you delegate. <laughs> okay, well, on behalf of my mother, my brothers, and other family members here tonight, I want to thank township board for this wonderful honor. Uh, my dad, he did lead by good example, and we are all very so proud of him. And I know he's watching from his place in heaven, and he has to be very happy with this honor tonight. And so thank you very much. Thank you. Tell them to start praying for the lions a little more. Yeah. <laughs> Which brings us to unfinished business. 
providing a vision and the drive to make a lot of these things happen and and I wish you very well.